I'm getting is random no start conditions. The car cranks, but it won't fire. If you guys only knew how many times I shot this exact clip thinking that I had solved the problem, you would be amazed. That's the beauty of video editing, right? So let me walk you through the troubleshooting process that I went through that could help you guys if you ever experience something like this in the future. First of all, underneath this seat is your fuel pump. I know going to other episodes, I do a lot of work on the fuel pump. One thing you can do is you can take a 12 volt battery and you can hook it up to terminals four and five. First, hook your leads up to four and five, bring them over and then you can just tap it and you'll hear your fuel pump whir. I like that word, whir, inside uh, the tank. So you know that your fuel pump works or not. You can also do an ohm reading, which I cover in a previous episode on that. We'll help you isolate in very basic terms if your fuel is being pumped towards the engine. Once you've determined that, you can crank the car over, if your car is cranking that is, and you can pull a spark plug and smell it and see if there's fuel in the spark plug. If there's fuel in the spark plug, that means the injectors are firing and it's they're providing fuel to the combustion chamber. So that'll help you determine if fuel is getting through your feed line into your, um, your rails. Uh, if you're not getting fuel into the combustion chamber, it is possible that whatever sensor has gone out or whatever has gone out on you is preventing uh, spark and fuel. Sometimes there's a safeguard in place for that. Next, you can start doing some ohm tests on uh, various sensors. The one that I really went after was this one here. Right here, you can unplug this and you can do an ohm reading on the sensor side and that'll give you a, an idea if, the, if that's bad. Generally speaking, these sensors are somewhere in the neighborhood of like 0.2 to, to 3 ohms. Now the exception would be these VVTI actuators here. Uh, for some reason, I started going after them. This one here on the bank two measures at 1.3 and this one here measures around 8.5 ohms. Check that out. Nonetheless, I had a buddy check it on his car who has the exact same car and he had the same readings. If you have a buddy, you can also compare notes. So we checked the cam position sensor, the VVTI actuators. You can, you can check the math also. Uh, I didn't because I know it's newer, but you can check that for resistance on a couple terminals and help isolate the issue. Next, I wanna point out a very simple one, but one that's often overlooked. And I believe this is my issue. Right here is the coolant temperature sensor. What I noticed was I started messing around with it. I uh, undid this connector and I looked at the terminals which are on this and I, I tried to measure them for resistance. I saw that one was relatively bent. So what I'm thinking is this connector, it moves a little bit, not much. So I think I'm either having an issue with this sensor intermittently working or the connection to it not working properly. If you take this off, the car won't start. If you take it off while the car is running, the idle drops to like 300. It really does not like when this is not working properly in here. I started wiggling and jiggling and moving this thing around and the car fired up. And remember, I had a crank but no start condition for a week now. Changed out the uh, crank position sensor. This is your crank position sensor right here. First thing I would do is inspect the wiring to make sure there's no obvious damage. Make sure it didn't get caught up in the serpentine belt and that the connection is good here and there's no crack, nothing cracked or anything like that. But what you're gonna need to get this out is a, an extension and a 10 millimeter. If you can jack the car up or put it on ramps, you should have enough room to access it like this. And it's just one 10 millimeter bolt, pretty simple. And when you take yours out, it's probably gonna be uh, pretty dirty because it's magnetic. This one, I've already had it out, so I've already cleaned it off. And you'll notice that it says Denso on here, on here, and it does give the part number, but in my case, this is the original. So the part number has been superseded. I'll put the part number up on the screen right now so you can see what the part number is. They do sell it at the dealer for about $172 at the time of this video. Uh, shopping around a bit, I actually ended up getting one on Amazon 
for $85. 196-1114, I believe it is good for the 1UZ and 3UZ, but be sure to double check me on that part number. All right, you got your Denso marking here, Japan. Let's take a look and see if they're the same. So these look exactly the same. Open this one up, because I feel pretty good about it. And uh, I think I'll just slap it in there real quick and check, see if the car will fire up. I mean, it's rotated a little bit. About right there is good. There's 85 bucks down the tube, but hey, I have a new crank position sensor. You gotta check for fuel, air, and spark. And then you gotta check all the sensors in between and all the wiring in between. So it can be tedious, it can be stressful, but I just want you to remember, it could be as simple as your engine coolant temperature sensor right there. There you go guys, car is no longer dead. Thanks for joining me on this episode. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to smack that subscribe button and hit the like button and drop a comment if you've experienced similar things. Uh, I hope this helped you out and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks.